Hey, hello, my friend. Welcome back to another episode. Today, I want to talk to you about how to pick your best work to submit to a gallery. Yes, let's say you decide to submit to a gallery and you really want to pick your best work. How to do it? Where do you start? How do you know which pieces are your best? How do you know what the gallery wants to look at? So in this episode, I'm going to share with you seven steps that you can use you know, to help you with selecting your best images to submit to a gallery or a shop. My name is Sergio Gomez. I'm an artist, curator, gallery owner, author, and co-founder of the Art Next Level program. And my goal with this channel is to make marketing and art business easy so that you can grow your art career, find new opportunities, sell more art, and spend more time creating in the studio. So if you like that, make sure you click on the subscribe button and click on the little bell so that you receive notifications of our future videos. All right, my friends, so welcome back. As I said in my intro, let's talk about seven steps that you can use today, you know, to pick your best work when you're applying for a gallery. And I got this idea because uh, I was coaching an artist the other day on a one-on-one -on -one session, an artist who needed help, needed my help. So she signed up for a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me. What we, what we did for that hour is we looked at her work. We looked at, you know, her best pieces and we looked at you know how do we pick the best work to show your best face to that gallery that you may want to submit so i decided to share this with you here the seven steps so that it can help you you know when you are putting together a portfolio of works to submit to a gallery that may be interested in your work or a gallery that you may want to submit because you think uh, they could um uh, be a great fit for you as an artist. So let's go and let's start with the first one. And I'm gonna use for this, both my experience as an artist of many years now, over 30 years of career, in which uh, you know I have submitted a lot of work to galleries and museums as well for exhibitions. And also as a gallery owner, you know, being the person on the other side of the desk receiving the information. Our gallery now has been open for just about almost 20 years. So that's a long time. I have seen hundreds and hundreds of submissions from artists, portfolios, you name it, in all ways from back in the day, uh, you know, slides and portfolio books to now digital applications, PDFs and so on, websites, you name it. So I have seen a lot and I can tell you you know, some of the some of the best practices that you can follow when applying for a gallery, you know, when submitting your portfolio to a gallery. So that's kind of like the framework I'm using both sides of the desk, you know, from the artist perspective and from the gallery perspective. So here we go. Let's start with number one. The first thing that you may want to look at before you start selecting your artwork is think about the question of who am I applying for? You know, what type of, what type of space am I applying for? Uh, to you know, is it a commercial gallery? Is it a non-for-profit gallery? Is it a co-op space? Is it an, an institution? Uh, is it a business? Is it an art center? Is it a museum? You know, etc. There are you know really hundreds of different types of venues that you can exhibit your art. So you gotta think about that first. Who is this for? Who am I? You know, submitting. Uh, too. And you got to think about, you know, what they may be looking for in that sense. You know, for example, if it's a commercial gallery that they really promote a lot of sales and things for artists. So you got to think about also the type of work that you may want to submit as well. Uh, that may be also, uh, you know, good fit for them to be able to sell to their clientele. And how do you know this? Well, you have to visit their website, you have to visit their Instagram, their, their social media accounts, see what kind of art they're promoting, see what kind of art, you know, they seem to, to manage for most of the time, look at what artists they are uh, also representing and selling art from. You know, look at the exhibitions, the history of exhibitions that they recently have. This kind of will give you a good idea as, as to what type of art they uh, promote or they want to um, you know, feature what type of artists they want to work with. You know, at the same time, you know, if it's, for example, you're applying to a museum, well, a museum will have a different scope, a different lens in which they look at art and what type of exhibitions and what type of artists they want to work with, you know, where um, they are not worried about making sales because that's not what they exist for. So every, every entity, every organization, every business has a reason for being, right? Has a, a reason for existing. So you gotta find out a little bit of what that is so that you can make your best choices. For example, in my case as an artist, you know, when I want to apply for a gallery exhibition, 
you know, I select certain awards that I think will be more suited for that versus when I'm applying for a museum show. And I'll show you here some samples, for example, of museum exhibitions where I choose work that's much larger in scale, also perhaps uh, not as commercial in nature, where I, I work with some more deeper subjects, subject matter, you know, that are also, um, you know, sometimes political or social issues. That is not necessarily what somebody would buy to put in the living room, right? But they're super important as pieces of conversations, you know, on a museum show. So those are the things that you want to look at first, you know, what type of venue it is, what type of art they manage, and what, from everything that I have done as an artist, you know, what may be a better fit for them. Uh, the second thing that you may want to do is decide how many pieces you may want to submit. And for this, what you want to do, my friend, is, you know, first find out, uh, you know, if the gallery that you are submitting uh, or the museum or the grant that you're applying to, whatever you're sending these images, uh, that if they already have some instructions for you to follow. You do not want to do something that they don't want you to do. In other words, if the gallery says, you know, send us your images via PDF, no larger than two megabytes, for example, uh, you don't want to then go and send them a catalog in print with a giant portfolio, you know, uh, pages, because that's not how they want to do it, right? They have already said how they want to do it. So, you know, to review applications. So you, you first gotta find out if they have some instructions, you know, to follow. If they don't, well, you know, then you gotta think about other ways. And that's a completely other conversation on how to find galleries to submit to, which is a different video. But on this one, I want to cover just, again, the, the how to select your art. Once you have already found a gallery that's accepting or is looking for art or a museum, accepting proposals or exhibitions, you know, that sort of thing. So once you have a sign, that or you meet a collector who says, hey, send, or I'm sorry, when you meet a curator who says, hey, you know, send me some images uh, of your work, send me your portfolio, that sort of thing. So what you want to do is figure out how many should I send. If there are no instructions as to how many, you know, then you have to make that decision yourself. You know, how many is too many, how little is too little, right? And there's no, you know, uh, a specific number that is a must. If you put one more, then, you know, you're out. No, I think... In my opinion, as a, now speaking as a curator of many years, over 100 exhibitions I have curated in my career, nationally and internationally, and also as a gallery owner, I can tell you, you know, by looking at five, six pieces from a given artist, I can already tell, you know, if this is an artist who would fit either the project that I'm working with or the show that I'm curating or the work that may, we may want to show in our gallery, right? I don't need to see 20 pieces of art to make a decision. Typically, you know, you're looking at five or six, I can already uh, tell, yes, I want to see more or no, this is, this is enough, I've seen enough. And what I recommend, um, again, from the gallery perspective, is that you pick about five to eight pieces, five to eight, I think, your best works, right? Five or to eight of your best works. Then if you have, for example, three-dimensional work and you need also maybe uh, more uh, documentation to show uh, more details and things of that nature, multiple sides of the piece, you know, as well. But I would say, you know, five to 10, the most on the high end, uh, five to eight. Again, this is a, a first introduction that you are uh, doing with somebody. Uh, the next one, next thing that you may want to consider, which is number three, you know, think about recent work versus older work, you know, should I put all new pieces or should I mix with some older pieces, right? And a lot of artists say, well, you know, Sergio, a lot of galleries don't want to see old work. They just want brand new work. Uh, what should I do? And that is a, that is a good question. And it, it all goes back, everything kind of goes back to the first one, right? To thinking about what is the purpose, you know, what type of gallery or museum or institution you are submitting, right? Because that will also make, um, uh, you know, a, an effect into what, pieces you're going to select versus older versus new. For example, now speaking as an artist, if I'm submitting work for a museum show or a curator who's creating an exhibition on a specific theme, it doesn't matter to me if it's an older piece, if the piece fits really, really well with the show theme and or with the, what the museum uh, proposal is about, then it doesn't matter if it's an older piece. For the curator, what they're looking for is good work, right? That matches their criteria. 
Uh, that's, that's their main goal, right? So, and I've always said this, a good work is always a good work. Uh, as artists, we are not making cheese that, you know, two weeks later is going to go bad. You know, a good work of art is always going to be a good work of art. And, you know, otherwise it will not be museums, right? Because all museums, you got to see all their art. So, you know, that's the whole idea. So you, you want to look at who is it for and then make the decisions. If you're going, let's say, for a more commercial type of gallery space, then perhaps, yeah, they may want to see what you're doing right now. What is your freshest work? What is the newest thing? Because that's what you are making more of, right? If it's a gallery who perhaps want to continue working with you in the future, they want to know that what type of art you're doing now because you're going to continue making more of it. So if everything goes well and they begin to sell that work, well, they will want more of that work, not work that you did 20 years ago that you're not doing anymore. Let's go to number four, which is also super important, is uh, cohesion. You really want to submit a portfolio that shows cohesion, that doesn't look like you are an all over the place artist, that you're doing everything and anything under the sun, and uh, you know, you're just shooting darts with your close eyes and see what sticks. You know, really a gallery wants to see consistency um, and wants to see cohesion in your uh, in your proposal or in, the, in your portfolio. So you may want to select works that have things in common, uh, particularly style in a style uh, or in theme or concept. You know, think about as you select your work, you know, what's, what's the common thread here? Or what's the common about these works? That doesn't mean that you have to select all very similar pieces. That's, that's not what I'm saying. In other words, uh, all the pieces have to look alike. That's not what I'm saying. Because a, a gallery wants to also see, you know, uh, various angles of, of what you're thinking, right? Various ways in which you are looking at a particular idea. Um, so, or the things that you're exploring as an artist, the thing that makes you excited as an artist through your work. Uh, so, that's not, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about that all the work has to be the same. But at the same time, there should be some traces that they come from the same artist. You don't want to show a portfolio that looks like come from 10 different artists. Every piece is so different. One is a portrait that is in a style like Cubist, right? And then the next one is a landscape that is highly realistic. And then the next one is an abstract piece. And the next one is a sculpture um, made with clay. And the next one, etc. You know, it's an architectural piece. You know. That would look like you are proposing a, a you know, a, a show that's made out of ten different people versus one. So, you know, if you're a multidisciplinary artist, artist that does various things, which I've met so many and I have worked with so many in my both in my gallery and also as a curator, uh, you may want to, uh, you know, pick different mediums, you know, um, like some paintings and maybe uh, some sculptures and maybe some photographs, let's say. But they, they, they have something in common, you know, uh, from you as the artist, right? There, there's this, a certain common element. And I know many wonderful artists who work with various disciplines, who work with various materials, uh, and even a variation of styles that you can still find, you know, a thread of commonality. And that sometimes is difficult for you to find as an artist. I do a lot of coaching one-on-one -on -one sessions with artists, and often an artist says, you know, Sergio, I have, you know, a lot of different work in different styles and, and I'm confused. So when we actually look at the artwork and, uh, and I look at it, I say, actually, you know, you may think that you're working with many different styles, but actually you'll be surprised that in my opinion, when I see your work, I see a lot of, of common things. I see a lot of commonality between this series versus that series versus that series. So, you know, we talk about those things, you know, what are some of the common elements and how they can actually work together. And that takes me to my next point, well, which is my point number five. You want to start narrowing down, right? You start to narrow it down. So you look at everything that you have created as an artist or your recent work and so on, and you start, you know, pretty much putting things on the side. Okay, this one is a good one. This one, maybe not so good. And then you start categorizing and figuring out what things start making the cut. So I would say start... You know, it depends how long you've been making art, how many pieces you may have available, you know, to show. You know, start with maybe 20, 20 become 15, then 15 become 12. And now, you know, when you get to the 12 number, 10 number, now, you know, you're really starting to get to, to uh, what really is important, right? What really matters, what really starts to look good. 
And even as you get to the number 10, you say, these are my top 10, you know, out of those top 10, which ones are your top five? That those will be at the, at the beginning of your, of your proposal, at the beginning uh, of your sample work in your portfolio. What are those key pieces that really, really um, make, a, make a statement into who you are as an artist and the ideas that you're working with and developing? So find out what, the, who, you know, what those five pieces are. Why are they important to you, right? Why they matter so much to you? Why do you think they are strong? You know, make that clear in your mind as you're looking at your work. And that is very important, you know, because there's, there's always the tendency of, I want to show them more because I want to show them more. And like I said, more is not always better, right? Uh, again, a seasoned curator, a seasoned gallery, they don't need to see 25 pieces, you know. They will know as soon as they start, you know, when they get to the five, six image, if they want to say, okay, I want to see more or I think that's enough. If you grab their attention and this is work that they, that they like, and if they want to see more, you know, of what, from what you send them, well, that's why you'll always want to include a link to your website, a link to your Instagram, a link to your social media or, or your digital portfolio. So they can always have the option. And it has happened to me where, you know, I'm looking at an artist who sent me five images or six images. Uh, and I'm like, oh, I will, I, I'm really intrigued. I want to see more. So what first thing I look for, okay, where's the link? Where's the link where I can see more of it, right? We live in a world of accessibility where you don't have to show everything in order to have everything accessible, right? Here are my best five, six pieces, and if you want to see the rest of it, click here. Simple as that, right? Somebody who's really interested is going to look in there. Instead of me trying to send you 20 images to look at, and I hate, you know, when as a curator or as a gallery, when an artist sends me 20 images to look at, I don't have time, you know? Uh, to look at so many because I, by just looking at the first five, I'll know if this is something I'm interested in or not. Uh, number six, also very important, is you know if you need help, seek help. You know, get feedback from others, and this is an important step. And that's you know some that is so, uh, often some of the topics that I cover in my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with artists, where an artist is like Sergio, this is really important for me. I'm doing a really important submission and I need help. I need somebody to, to look at my work and, and, and help me through that. So um, that's where somebody like me comes in or another person that you really respect that can help you look at your work and help you go through uh, talking about your art. Uh, most of the time, you as the artist, and you, you know, you, your gut feeling already tells you what your best pieces are, but you need you need that second opinion. You need someone to help you see perhaps some of the your blind spots, some of the things that you're not able to see as you look at your own work. Somebody who can confirm, say, yeah, that's a great piece, or you're right, you know, that one's not the best one. Or, you know, maybe consider this one also along with that because I think that series, you know, I see a very, very clear common thread. So, you know, get feedback, get feedback. At the end of the day, it's your decision, it's your option, you know, you're going to choose. And this is what I always say too to the artist, you know, when I meet one-on-one, -on -one, like, I'm going to give you my, my opinion, what I, what I think, as we're going to work together through this. But at the end of the day, it's your choice. You're going to make your choice, right? You cannot blame me, you know, for, oh, the gallery didn't, uh, you know, accept that it's your fault. No, it's, you make the decision at the end of the day, it's, you're, you're just asking for my opinion, but the decision is yours. You make the choice, it's your call, right? It's your call. And, but it's good to have other people's feedback. And by the way, you know, if you would like to work with me on something like this, uh, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions of uh, art business practice and uh, anything that you may want to work. For example, I last, uh, last couple of days ago, I work with an artist who needed help to create her marketing calendar for a big show that she's having, a solo show. So we sit down and we work day by day exactly what she was going to post, exactly when, what, and, and everything. And it was really, really awesome. And other artists, like say, sometimes comes for business advice or like this, you know, going through a portfolio and helping them select their best work. And if you want to work with me as a one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to put the link under the description of my video to the link where you can go and sign up for my sessions. All the information is there including my calendar. So you sign up, you pick a date, and then we meet in Zoom. So it's just a really, really uh, great and, and awesome sessions. Um, so we're at number six, right? Seek help from others, get feedback from others, uh, people that you respect. Let's go to number seven, which I think number seven is super, super important too. 
And that is once you have gone through all this process, make 100% sure, 100% sure that you have great quality images, great quality images in the world of today, in the world of today, as you're watching this video, there's no excuse in the world for you to have bad images. Phones are amazing nowadays. Cameras are amazing. You don't need to spend $3,000 to get a really good photograph, you know, that you can send over by email or submit through a website. You know, the reality is that there's no excuse for that. If you don't know how to do it, there are hundreds of YouTube videos that can show you how to take amazing pictures of your art, even with your phone. So uh, you, you don't want to be that artist whose images are bad. And actually, you know, to give you a good example, last week I was part of a jury panel for a, for a big uh, international prize, uh, an award, and we were looking at hundreds of submissions by artists from all over the world and you know we had to disqualify some of them because the work looked great it was probably would have gone through the next round but because the images were so bad you know said no you know uh, this is it's unacceptable you know uh, a, a picture that was taken with the phone like probably three seconds before the submission deadline occurred and uh, you could even see the reflection of the, of the phone in the surface of the artwork unacceptable totally unacceptable an amazing probably an amazing piece but uh, unfortunately a bad image, right? Or images that have got good quality or too much reflection or so on. So what I suggest is uh, make sure that you take the time to take proper images of your art. And as you submit also something to consider, particularly for those of you whose works have a lot of depth, let's say if you do paintings which have a lot of depth or a lot of texture, a lot of material or sculptures or things like that, you know, once you, you pick maybe your five, six to eight pieces that you may submit to the gallery to also include on one or two pieces uh, a couple details of, you know, up close of your artwork. Sometimes it's really difficult, you know, for a gallery to figure out, you know, if what we're looking at is flat or it has surface. You know, a lot of things may appear that has three dimensional qualities, but they may not. And always, always, first you know, as I always say to every artist that I meet on my one-on-one -on -one sessions or when I do a, a, a teaching course or, or something like this here on YouTube is always check first with the gallery. See if, they already, if the gallery already has instructions, no matter what I said, that is useless. Follow their instructions. Follow their instructions because that's how they want to review artists' work. So if no instructions are found, then this video kind of will help you again to do so. And even if you have instructions, you know, to follow, still a lot of the points that we cover in this video are gonna be really, really helpful. And before I close, my friend, if you're not working yet with me inside the Art Next Level program, I invite you to take our seven week uh, challenge that's called the seven, the seven week Art Business Growth Challenge. The Art Business Growth Challenge is going to help you take your art career to the next level. We look at every aspect of your art career, starting from your wellness, your mindset, you know, your business, uh, organization, productivity, your marketing, your sales, identifying which out of those columns are weak, how can we strengthen them, how can we can make them better, so that you can grow your art career, so you can experience greater success in your art career according to the goals you have. If you want to have more exhibitions, so, you know, we look at how you know, we, uh, what aspects of your art business, your art career need to be strengthened. You know, if you want to sell more art, if you want to get better at marketing, uh, if you want to gain confidence perhaps in your art, you know, those are all the things that we covered along with our coaches inside our next level program. You know, we invite you to join us for the Art Business Growth Challenge, a seven week challenge that's really awesome. And you will find also the link to that under this video. So check those out because uh, hundreds of artists have taken uh, or challenge and they are doing really, really amazing things in the world. But wait, before you leave this video, if you are an artist who wants to grow your art career and wants to achieve greater success, make sure you check out the Art Next Level program. You will find a link under this video. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the next video that we have recommended just for you.